Welcome to a very special edition of Inside the Burrow, the podcast presented by the FEU Owls Nest, website for and by FEU Owls fans. And holy smokes, we got a big one. Uh, and you know what? The Owls Nest team, we've been sitting on this one for a while now, and I can't wait for you all to listen to Shane about all the ins and outs of this move. But it is finally official. Nicozy Perry, he's coming home. He's coming home to paradise. I know it's home, you know, Coral Gables, quick drive up 95, but let's be real. He is home now. He is inside the quarterback room at FAU. Massive, massive news that is having uh, some ramifications that's being seen across the country. You know, it's going to be picked up by all the major outlets very, very soon. Uh, Shane, I mean, Brother, you've been sitting on this one for a long while. Uh, why don't you talk about the whole process and what this means for uh, FEU football next season? It changes everything, right? It was the final piece. It was the piece that was felt that was missing during last year's game. This is the whole subject. This was the phone calls I had with fans I'm friends with. Like all of next season, no matter how much defense comes back, Kiki Leroy, transfer tight ends, all this stuff, uh, obviously – Football, the name of the game, and the most important position in sports is the quarterback. And they got a guy, uh, a local kid, someone who's well, obviously well known down here for his time spent at Miami, who has kind of been through it. A guy who has been in, you know, in and out of the starting lineup, had a little bit of trouble in the begin his early years in his career at UM, but really kind of progressed. And uh, you know, I kind of knew back way back in bowl season, that there was a possibility there. It felt like after Miami got cut some of their commits. And uh, I believe when uh, Dricky King announced that he was going to come back for an extra season, uh, it, it felt like, okay, this is a guy who could be on the market. Right. And it just felt like the, one of those really early kind of great fits. And, you know, and even when, when I got, it got a little nerve wracking, you know, King gets hurt. So there's that. Right. And Nikosi looks great in that game versus Oklahoma state. If Miami's receivers hang on to some really nice balls, he's thrown. I mean, they, they dropped a lot of passes in the game. He probably brings them back. Right. This is a guy who came up the bowl, you know, the bench in a bowl game and, you know, performed really well. And he's played in huge games. Like I kind of mentioned in the story, and this is a guy who, who led a comeback at the hard rock against Willie Taggart brought Miami back uh, from a double digit deficit. When he walks out onto the swamp on September 4th for that opener, as opposed to the quarterbacks are kind of, and I'm not saying they are, I mean, Tronti's played in a ton of games. Posey obviously got experience last season, uh, Michael Johnson Jr. hasn't played a college, you know, he looked great in the spring game, but he hasn't, he hasn't played in a college football game yet. Nikosi's going to walk out in the swamp and be kind of unfazed by 90,000 there. I've done this. I've played in major college football games. I got a good team around me. Let's do this. So it's, it's, FBU has an amazing team coming back next year. And, you know, this is, this is the piece that, you know, not only on the field, Nikosi Perry and the excitement around it, him being a local kid is going to sell tickets as well. Yeah, that's massive. Cause I, you know, I mentioned about how this is going to create national attention, but I think for maybe the average fair weather sports fan in South Florida, they're going to know this name, Nikosi Perry. And, you know, we were talking a lot on Twitter recently about what can FAU do to get the, Local fan that doesn't really have a connection to the university, except it just being the hometown team, if you will. Um, what we can do to get them involved, and this is this is that one thing. This is one of the many things, but this is definitely a big home run. Uh, you know, getting big teams in here, but also getting big names that South Florida fans already know about on the team, and and this is it. Now, before we talk about the team in general next year. Briefly, I mean, what does this mean for the quarterback room? Because you have Tronti, you have Posey, MJ Jr. I mean, Johnson just got here, what, dude, like just a few months ago? I yeah, he, was, and, he, and he, looked, he looked like the best quarterback of the spring. And Tronti, he did. did, he did. I thought he was improved in the spring as well. I think, you know, in the spring game, we didn't get a chance to look at, you know, obviously uh, we weren't able to go to every practice, but in the spring game, Tronti did what he did. 
uh, you know, I, I, the offense looked better itself in the spring game, right? There's a few big plays uh, that were made. And it, I just think he, but it's his job to kind of lose at this point, right? I, I've, I've been saying it on the nest and I didn't, you know, not saying this just because it's my full thought, but, you know, Johnson Jr., Michael Johnson Jr. could be looked at as like a freshman quarterback, right? He has four or five years of eligibility left. Uh, there, you know, especially with the COVID waiver. So he was at Penn State for a year, redshirted, didn't, you know, enter the portal kind of right before the season when the Big Ten wasn't sure if they were going to play or not. So it's almost similar to just getting a four-star quarterback at a high school. So there's there's your young developmental guy. Nikosi has two years of eligibility let if he decides to use the quote-unquote COVID waiver uh you know, eligibilities are always a little foggier now, you know, you, with anyone that played college football last year. So uh, it's it's just really exciting. You know, it's it really just felt like the missing piece. And, it, it, you know, I, I joked with someone last week, especially after us uh, picking up the tight end uh, as a year, you know, out of the D2, you know, Division two school. It's it doesn't really feel like there's many holes on this football team. Right. I mean, point to a position and go, ooh. I mean, they've added seven transfers, two at O line. Right. Uh, they added some depth to the running back room and Ford, right? Some explosiveness. It's and now the quarterback, uh, Keyshawn Green, another kind of linebacker safety hybrid they added. And right. you know, and a couple guys who couldn't play last year, you know, it's like on the O line. Sebastian, uh, I mean, um, I'm going to mind blank on the name. Um, Sebastian Dolcine is going to be eligible to play this year. Malcolm Lamar is going to be eligible to play this year on the D line. Of they had course, a Kamar Bell, right? And yeah. they return pretty much everyone on the O line. You know, we have all these seniors coming back. So FAU is going to have a deep veteran team next year. So that's extremely exciting. I think, I think it's interesting that, you know, we were just talking about the quarterbacks. We never even mentioned Tag Jr. I just remembered that because he, he had a decent spring as well, actually, but it's he's well, there to compete for the long term. I mean, they're, yeah, just, they're, not think, they're not thinking about, I think, you know, if I had to guess a hypothetical depth chart going into week, going into swamp, I think you're going to see uh, Perry and probably either Tronti or um, Michael Johnson Jr. backing it up. And I'm really curious to see what happens with JV on Posey and such a good athlete. Do you do, do you use him in certain packages, keep him running out there? He did play receiver for a year. So this is just speculation. Uh, but, you know, so we'll kind of see what happens with that. And that's right. Caught a touchdown as well. So we, we don't know what the future holds, but at least, uh, you know, Posey and Tag Jr. do have some experience at receiver if it comes to that. And they're still young. So it'll be exciting to see how their development progresses. Um, but obviously, I mean, Perry is the big news. Uh, you know, Shane mentioned about how uh, stacked we are um, next year, how much returning talent. We were talking about this before we started recording, Shane, but uh, FAU is fourth in the entire nation when it comes to uh, returning production um, from last season with 93%. I have the stat right here. Uh, the only programs that are better are also in the G5, uh, actually. Louisiana, Lafayette, Wyoming, and Toledo. So that definitely bodes well uh, for FAU. That's Bill Connolly on the staff, by the way. Uh, if you follow him, I mean, it's sad based assist. on his SMP kind of graph. Yeah, yeah. the and analytics that does not even include the possible return of Akias Leroy, the addition of Nikosi Perry, and the addition of a uh, Jamari Ford. So yeah, it's I get people really involved <laughs> this year. This is a good, good football team. Yeah, I mean. I, if, if you're if that uh, home opener or not hoping opener, beg your pardon if that season opener against UF wasn't circled on y'all's calendar already I mean circle that sucker right now because that's going to be an exciting one and hopefully it's not as disappointing as a lot of the other season openers in FEU program history but definitely a bright spot now that we're moving on I think Conference USA title is in the cards again we're gonna to have to see and it's gonna be conversation i think shane and i and you know all of us are gonna to have to be talking about soon uh but for now we're the clear favorites 
to win the con. I, I, I think we're the clear betting favorites at this point. This is the point that put us, oh, are, are they sure? Are they better than Marshall? I think Coach Perry puts us as clear favorites at this point. I, I think Vegas will, will probably do it. Vegas always kind of yeah. likes us, which is, which is nice. It's flattering. But that said, uh, I mean, this is a quick one, a little emergency breaking news pod for y'all from inside the borough. Um, the big news to wrap it up, Nikozi Perry, he is paradise bound. The former Miami Hurricane, I mean, everyone in the nation wanted him, four star out of high school, uh, he's coming home. So uh, from Shane and myself, uh, thank you for following. Thank you for listening yet again. We really appreciate you guys. Make sure you follow FAU Owls Nest and Inside the Borough on Twitter and at FAUowlsNest.com. Check out the YouTube account, uh, YouTube just FAU Owls Nest and Instagram. Instagram is popping off right now. Uh, follow FAU Owls Nest there as well. So again, from Shane and myself, thank you very much and go Owls.